All right, what you're going to be doing today, you have a sheet in front of you that um, looks like this. It is a little bit of note taking, and the rest is an activity to help you understand um, calories and how you get energy from food. And then you're going to be um, doing an activity understanding your caloric intake and um, the energy that you get from food. So have this sheet in front of you. Um, Tamaya, you got to turn this way a little bit so that you can see. All right, so your notes are entitled Energy and Bonds. If you can put the lights on it. Really quickly, just discuss with your partner why you think people are more, um, are getting more and more overweight. Because it is a, a fact that in our society there are more obese people. So take about 30 seconds to talk with your partner, somebody in your group, about why you think people are getting overweight. All right, back here, what'd you guys say? Okay, too many calories, not exercising. This group, what'd you say? Fast food. Fast food? Eat too much? Eat it because it's there. Fast food? All right. The number one reason is poor nutrition. Eating the wrong things. You can eat a little bit of the wrong thing and still um, become over obese, or you can eat a lot of the wrong thing. So it is costing our society, mainly our children, on any given day. This is a menu for children. Fast food, Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger King, Steak and Shake, Cookout, those types of things are quick, fast meal to be able to get to. There are too many unhealthy choices, like you all said. There's so much food there, and it's unhealthy choices. You got burgers, you got milkshakes, you got ice cream, you got cake. Everywhere you go, you can get a dessert with your meal without hesitation, without a problem. And sometimes dessert is a kicker. It's two apple pies for one dollar. Would you like two apple pies for one dollar? Uh, yeah. <laughs> now that you said it, uh, would you like to try our frosted lemonade? Yeah. Yep. It so sounds great. That's at uh, Chick Fil A. Uh, would you like to add a cinnamon roll with that? Yeah. <laughs> the unhealthy choices often contain sugar. Too much sugar is in a lot of our foods that we eat, and that's the unhealthy choice. The other reason is their portion sizes are too big. Back in the days, your burgers were not as large as they are now because they're pumping them up with things to make them look more appetizing to you. Like, yeah, eat this. It's so juicy. And you're like, oh, yeah. They weren't like that back in the day because they were not unhealthy. They were made with strictly what they said they were going to be made with. Denarian, question. Okay. The other reason is we drink many of our calories. Instead of taking it into foods and, and uh, nutrients that we need, we drink a whole lot of things. And you are familiar with a lot of these things here. Um, the Sobe drink has 300 calories and 72 grams of sugar. Most of the calories come from the sugar that's there. A 20 ounce of soda, which you get out of the soda machine, has 325 calories. 88 grams of that is sugar. And then, of course, our uh, Starbucks drink that we all love, and I'm guilty of it as well, 500 calories. And you'll see why this is a problem, because you'll see how many calories you're supposed to have in a take of a day. Between 1,700 and 2,000 calories per day is considered to be healthy. If you 500 of that is from one drink, you only now have 1,200 calories to go. And then let's say you now drink a soda. That's 325 calories. You're down to 60, 600 and some odd calories from there. And it's like, all right, now if you start eating healthy on that, now you've added too many calories to your day. And that's the reason for obesity. Adding too much of anything in, in there is going to be a problem why you're starting to have unhealthiness and then obesity because now you're trying to get what you need and then you end up going over. Sit down. Yeah, we're going to go through that. There are calories that are good that you can fit into that 1,700 to 2,000 on good calories. All right. Um, so let's see. The other thing, uh, like I said, portion sizes are too big. Um, and 20 years ago, you got 333 calories from a burger. It didn't quite look too appetizing, but it was good, and you got what you needed. Now there's 590 calories in burgers. You can not only get a regular burger, but your burger can have bacon on it. It can be a ranch burger jalapeno cheddar 
onion ring burger with everything in it, mashed potatoes in the middle, break it up, sauce gooing out of it, A1 sauce, guacamole, all that stuff on it just to make it taste good, but it's not necessarily healthy for you. And then uh, other t uh, reasons that you all mentioned, not enough exercise. Yeah, sometimes you eat not so healthy like this Snickers that I have right here. Just give me a picker up because what happens when you don't eat sneakers, you're not yourself. <laughs> so I don't. I want to be myself. Um, but I do run in the morning. I do get on my, my elliptical bike and things of that nature. So I kind of work off um, any um, some morning, most of the weekends, but some mornings I do. I have a little one, remember, so it's kind of hard. But dealing with her is enough. Um, people are uneducated. That's a major, major reason. Ignorance breeds problems. When you don't know, then you can't do what, anything better. So if you knew better, you do better. So magazine ads for weight loss products manipulate people with false hope. They let you know you got this magic pill you can take and you're going to be just like this lady on the magazine. You sprinkle some of this on your food and you can eat whatever you want and never gain a pound. Yeah. Then we got new pills out, um, the new skinny pill, and they'll show you a lady with her jeans like this. I'm like, Ooh. Then you got um, My Dream Body magazine, where this used to be me, and this is what I did. Read up, and this would be the front of a magazine. So chances are when you're walking down the aisle and you see that lady on there, like, ooh, she's got nice abs. I'm like, oh, let me look at that. And you'll get to reading and thinking, this is what I can do. Um, the fastest all-natural diet known for rapid weight loss. Without a prescription. Yeah. So am I saying you should not eat? No. That's definitely not what I'm saying. On your notes, how do you get energy from what you eat and drink? When you eat and drink, the molecular bonds of your food and drink are broken and new bonds are formed. This creates energy. Do you need to write that word for word? No. The bonds in your food are broken to form new bonds, which equals energy. You get energy from everything you eat, whether it's good or bad. But eating a cinnamon roll is going to give you energy, but that energy is not going to last. So it's going to take you up really, really quickly, and then by the end of the day, you're brought down because you have no stored energy to help you sustain throughout the rest of the day. So imagine if in the morning you drink a coffee and you have a donut, in the afternoon, you're, you were a little bit hungry, so you had a um, fast food burger with all the jalapenos and all the stuff on it. And then you got a little snack, so you have a Snickers and a soda. And then for dinner, you stop at McDonald's and get some fries with your um, your burger and two apple pies because they're a dollar. Your energy sustaining is not going to be there. At night, you're going to be wondering why you're like this, trying to do your homework or... Um, trying to work on something that you need to be working on because you have not provided yourself with what's needed. Sedarian. No, because it's sugar calories. No nutritional factor in candy. Granola bar has some stuff because of the granola, but there are going to be a lot of other healthy choices that you can go with, but that's better than eating a candy bar. Yes, but then you got oatmeal that's Packed with sugar, like maple brown and sugar, which is my favorite. Don't eat oatmeal unless it's sugar free. But you got to balance it off with some fruit. But then you have plain oatmeal that you can eat and then add fruits to it, which makes it a better option. All right. So moving on, looking at your notes, energy in food. Molecules that contain carbon have lots of energy. The food that you eat is made mostly of carbon. Notice I said food. Not the junk. <laughs> it does because it has sugar in it. So it, you're going to still get energy from it because it does have sugar. It has carbon in it. But again, there's that energy that's going to make you, okay, I'm all rowdy. And then after you do all that, you're going to be like ready to pass out because you didn't provide yourself with the good stuff because it's energy that's going to, there's uh, foods that can store energy in your body. So when you do get to the moment where you're like, you don't, you haven't eaten, your body still can go. Questions about this? All right. Then what's a calorie since we've been talking about that? This is a unit of heat, which is used to indicate the amount of energy that foods will produce in a human being. So when it says it has four calories, it's saying it's, it's giving you four units of calorie, four units of energy. 
for eating it. Or if it's a 375 calories, that's how much energy is going to be produced. But then again, you have to remember, is it going to be good energy, energy that's going to be stored and last, or is it going to be energy just for a moment? Because like when you're really, really sleepy, what's the number two thing people go to? Well, number one thing people go to when they're really, really sleepy? Soda. Caffeine. Soda. Caffeine, soda. That Because that's going to shoot you up really quickly and let you last for a while. But then you're going to be really, really sleepy because that's not any stored energy. All right. Every day, to function properly, your body needs a certain amount of energy. Kinds of food molecules that you get this energy from are protein. Next to protein on your notes, I want you to write essential nutrient or necessary nutrient or important nutrient. If you don't recognize the fact that it's under the title that says energy and food, then you might want to write next to their source of energy. Protein is a source of energy. This is a good source of energy. So you'll hear me say things like, there's no protein in that. Like when Tadari asks about candy, there's no protein in it. So it's not going to be a good source of energy. The number of calories per gram in protein is four. Next to it, you're going to write the number four. This means there's four calories for each gram. So if it tells you, if a, a substance like, I have Nutella here. And in Nutella, there is, I love Nutella. There's two grams of protein. How many calories in protein, for the protein am I going to get? Eight. Let's just multiply it, multiply it together. So it's going to be a substance that's going to give me some energy, and it does have some protein, so it has some nutritional value. Not the best option, but it's much better than me putting something else, um, like frosting, on my food. So I can use that. Um, things that you get protein from would be things like meat, beans, it's in vegetables, um, some grains, but um, peanut butter is very high in protein as well. So those are good things that's going to help you sustain throughout the day. Um, if some, if anybody else in here is a vegetarian, fish is have fish have protein. Okay, it's very difficult for people who are vegetarians to get their protein intake because I don't eat meat, and meat is very very high in protein. So I eat a lot of fish and beans and things of that nature, and some dairy. Well, not dairy, but almond milk because I don't drink regular milk, and that's high in protein as well. Um, fats. There is nine calories per gram in fat. Now when we say fat, we're not, I'm not talking about the bad foods like that's very fatty. There's good fats um, in foods and these fats are um, for energy, for stored energy. Next to it you want to put for stored energy. Next to the word fat. These would be in your meats, your veggies, your eggs, your milk. This is going to be the good fat for your body because it's, this is going to be the stuff where after you've eaten lunch and you get home and you're, before you're, you start feeling like starving, it sustains you throughout the day. So after you eat lunch and you go to the bathroom or you went to the gym or you ran out or you whatever you did, you still have some energy to last throughout the day. Lastly, carbohydrates. Those are for energy. Those are your starches, your starches and your sugars. And that's how you see up on top where it says fats, proteins, carbohydrates, starches, and sugars. There's four calories per gram. And even when I say sugars, I don't necessarily mean candy. When you eat a strawberry, that's sweet. That has a good sugar in it. That's a carbohydrate. Your breads have carbohydrates in it. All right. Looking at the table that you just filled out, um, in units of calories per gram that, that you just looked at, which would give you more energy, a food that is high in fat, like butter, or a food that has high in carbohydrates, like bread? Go ahead and answer it first. Which one would give you more energy? The fat would give you more energy. So then looking at the next question. Based on that table, why do you think nutritionists sometimes advise people to limit their fat intake? Choose your best answer. The 
Kaya, why do you think nutritionists tell people to limit their fat intake even though it's going to give you a lot of energy? Because a gram of fat has many more calories than a gram of other foods? Yeah. Definitely. A small portion of fatty food can give you the same or more calories, which is more energy, than a large portion of a lower fat food. So you eat a small fat, you're going to get a lot, of, you're going to get energy, but you're going to have a lot of calories to have to burn off. But when you eat a smaller portion of a, a larger portion of something that's better and doesn't have as much fat and it's going to give you the same amount of calories, that's probably the better option. Here's an interesting fact to know about calories. Five pounds of spaghetti. So that would be like a whole family making up spaghetti, that is going to provide enough energy to brew a cup of a pot of coffee. Enough energy as I'm sorry, as what a pot of coffee would give you. One piece of cherry, up so just to go back to that, it would take that much food to give you what coffee gives you that, that amount of energy. But again, not gonna be good energy. One piece of cherry cheesecake is enough energy to light a light bulb for an hour and a half. And then 217 Big Macs to start a car up. How many of you think you've eaten 207 burgers in your life? 217 burgers in your life. All right. Not writing anything. The difference between dieting and eating has to do with calories. You have to be able to monitor your caloric intake to be able to, to know if you are going to lose weight. So if you lose weight too fast, you'll gain it back. You lose lean tissue, but you'll gain back fat. Many diets don't have you eat a balanced diet, eating from all food groups. If you don't look at your behavior and why you gain the weight, then you can't change the problem. So you end up repeating these same problems and having a, um, an issue. Eating more calories than your body needs is also bad. You can gain weight and be at risk for other diseases like diabetes, cancer, strokes, liver disease, high blood pressure problems with your knees and walking, breathing problems and even an early death. So these are things that you need to be mindful of now. So, how many of you have gotten caught in a crazy fat, like, okay, I'm just not gonna eat for today. I'm not eating all day today so I can lose weight. And some people do that, I'm, I'm just not gonna eat, I'm not gonna eat, and that's not good because it's like your body is saying, we never know when we're gonna get no food. And so when we get it, we're gonna hold on to it. Metabolism, yeah. <laughs> All right, so the bottom line is to ask yourself, if you set up a healthy lifestyle, can you do it for life? So if you look at your paper on the back, you're going to think about eating healthy. The directions are to complete the below form to determine what healthy caloric intake would be for you. Note, one pound equals 3,500 calories. So what that means is if you're trying to lose a pound, then you have to burn off 3,500 calories in order for that to be a pound. That's why people, when they track what they're, um, when they do a workout, how many calories did I burn? So they can know how much weight they're going to be trying to lose, especially if you have a plan in action. The safest way to lose weight is trying to lose one to two pounds per week, not six, seven, eight pounds in a week. For women, you should never go below a 12,000 cal 1,200 calories per day. It's not healthy. For men, never go below 1,500 calories per day. No, no, that means when you're eating your food, because you have to be counting calories. And then when you're, so when you count calories, you can know how much you need to eat. Just being mindful of your portions, being mindful of what you eat, and you know that, okay, this is the type of diet I'm going to have. I'm going to take in these many calories so that I don't gain weight so that when I'm working out, I don't have anything extra going on. All right, so to lose one pound of fat, you must drop how many calories? 3,500. So if you eat nothing, that's going to be a problem. And something's wrong with this slide. I don't know what happened to it. So I'm just going to make it All right, look at your paper because it looks like this. This is going to be for you. Put your current weight down. If you don't know exactly, take a guess. <laughs> 
Now, underneath, I want you to write BM, what BMR is. I have to add that down on the board for you. After you put your weight, if you're a female, multiply it by 10. If you're a male, multiply it by 11 and put your answer in this box. You can use the paper as scrap to write it down to figure it out. Once you finish doing that, you need to list your activity level. Three, five, or seven. I'm sorry, point three, point five, or point seven. Point three would be lightly active, meaning you really don't do much. You just walk to class. The most activity that you get is getting on the bus, sitting down, watching TV, and breathing. Moderate active, point five, meaning that you, when you're outside uh, hanging out with your friends, you walk to the store, you don't always get a ride. You may be involved in uh, a sport, a extracurricular activity that involves you moving. You don't really exercise on your own. Point seven will be very active, meaning that you're involved in some type of basketball, football, um, step team where you work out every day, and you might do something extra at home. Cheerleading. So put yours there. Then you're going to take this number and multiply it by this number and put it there. If you need to take your phones out to use the calculator, then you need to use it. So you'll take your point 0.3 and multiply it by this number or your point 0.5 and multiply it by this number or your point 0.7 and multiply it by this number. going to. You're multiplying it by decimal. Is there anyone that does not have their box two yet? Now you need to calculate. All right, then plug in your answer for box one here. Everybody put their answer for what they got in box one. So this box number goes here. Take this box number and put it here. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out how many calories you should eat per day. Then you're going to take your answer from box two and put it here and then add the two together and put it here. Do that now. Hmm? You almost, if you're that far, you can write it with. Everybody's paper would be different because everybody has a different weight unless there's somebody that's the same weight. Once you add them together, 
box one and box two, put the answer here. The answer that you have here, you're going to multiply it by 0.1 and put that in box three. Right. It's right underneath. It just doesn't. Um, you can put your number right underneath where it's where it says multiplying point one. Even though there's not a space there, just put that number there. So you have box one, box two. Underneath there is a space. Put that number there. Multiply by point one and then put your answer in box three. So far, so good. Then you're going to take box one. Plus box two, plus box three, and put that here. Put on your paper. Box one, two, and three, add them together. Whatever number you come up with, this should be how many calories you should eat per day. This should be the, look at the top of the paper, calories you should eat per day. Everyone's a little bit different because their weight's a little bit different. Now, we're not going to do the next two boxes. Listen up here. You can do this on your own for extra credit that I'm going to be giving you in just a moment. But if you wanted to lose weight, then you would fill numbers in here. Do this equation to figure out how much calories you would need to take to lose weight. If you're looking to gain weight, then you would do this equation, see how many calories you needed to gain weight. So if you're looking at yourself and you're thinking, I might excuse me, be a little bit overweight, or I might feel like I need to get a little bit leaner, then you would follow here. If you're feeling like I'm really not gaining weight, I'm not the weight I should be, you can do this here. It's optional. Flip your papers over to the back. I mean, yeah, to the back, the second paper. This is going to be your individual task and your homework. If you don't finish it in class today. You're going to be able to work with the partner. You will need calculators. I'm going to briefly explain it. I'm going to tell you about the extra credit option, and then I'm going to release you to start working on your homework. It's called Joe's Calories. Before we finish that, I'll go through that. Every day to function properly, your body needs what? Proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, which is calculated to be considered called what? You get what from that? Energy. Very good. Your body burns, which is also known as metabolizing, these three nutrients to produce energy, which is measured in calories. Now we're going to look at Joe. Joe is a 16-year-old teenager. He is 6 foot and weighs 250 pounds. Average, my son's 16, he's 6'2", and he weighs about 245. Here, he is a typical, and that's not heavy for a 6'2". Um, here is his typical food consumption for the day, which is quite similar to yours. So this is not something that's rare. Breakfast, two scrambled eggs, two pieces of bacon, one toast, one piece of toast and a glass of orange juice. And this is on your paper as well. For a snack, he has a Snickers candy bar because he's not himself during that time. He wants to make sure he's himself. Lunch, two pieces of pepperoni pizza, two breadsticks, and one cup of milk. Snack, a box of Kraft macaroni and cheese. This might be on a Saturday or when he gets home after school. Dinner, he has a burrito, a cup of rice, and salad, and a soda. And then a late night snack, he has a bag of popcorn. That's typical, right? 
nothing out of the ordinary. You probably won't have the milk, but maybe some of you in lunch have the milk. All right. Joe knows that one pound equals 3,500 calories. We have to figure out the safest way to lose. I'm sorry, the safest way to lose weight is one to two calories. I'm sorry, two pounds per day. If he cuts 500 calories per day times seven, then he'll be able to figure out what it is his intake needs to be. So you're looking on your paper. It says Joe wants to lose weight in a healthy way. And he has heard that if he drops 500 calories per day from what he usually eats, he will drop 3,500 3, calories. And that equals one pound so he can lose a pound a week. Obviously, Joe's daily food intake isn't as low in fat as it could be, and he is missing some important foods like fruits and vegetables, and it would be smart for him to substitute some healthier foods. But for starters, let's focus on the food Joe could cut out or cut down in his diet that would equal 500 calories without changing any other eating habits right now. We want to start, start low. You're going to be getting a sheet that looks like this. This this sheet has all of the food that he eats. It's also on my website, so you can log on and look at today's date and then pull up the um, the file for this so that you can have it saved in your computer so you can have it for your homework as well. But in class, you're going to get this, but you're going to give this back, so you'll have to download it on your computer. So when you look at this, you're going to be able to use this information to decide how to determine 500 calories being cut out of his diet. Now, the things that you need to remember, how many calories are from protein? Some of the back of this will tell you how many calories are all together. It tells you to be sure to multiply calories by servings per container. So it tells you serving size one cup, see how much he's actually had. Did he have two cups? Did he have two servings? Um, did he have two pieces? Is one piece of serving size? You have to pay attention to that information, and you'll be working with your group to do so. You may want to substitute um, healthier foods for his Snickers, for instance. Um, but can figure substitutions for him later. Today, you just want to focus on Joe's cutting the calories. So you'll enter the food, what the calorie is. Remember, the total amount needs to be 500. So right now, in your total calories cut, write 500. Because that's your goal. There's four spaces there. It doesn't necessarily have to be four things. You might find it in three things or two things. But you'll be figuring that out. Then you'll go through and you'll look at um, number two and number three and completing that. And then lastly, extra credit option. The extra credit that I'm going to be offering for you is for you to now take a better look at your own health and um, focus on how you can become a healthier you. It's a two-week assignment that you'll be working on. The first week will be you just eating normal and jotting down what everything that you're eating and counting the calories for it. The second week, you'll actually start substituting some of those things or changing your dietary intake and counting calories for that. And then finally, you'll write a short paper discussing your week, um, telling what did you do different, what were the challenges you faced, how did you overcome those challenges, and how you felt in the end. And that's not due until the 21st of September, and it'll be submitted in Canvas. Um, there are apps on your phone that you can download to track your calories as well. And then you'll be getting a sheet like this if you're looking to do um, this extra credit assignment, which will count twice um, in the grade book. Uh, this is an example of how it will look when you're tracking your daily intake, what you ate, how much uh, calories that it did it take. This is an example, and you'll get a sheet like this that you'll have to make copies of or copy it down so that you can track everything that you've eaten. I'm going to have you get started with your homework. If you are interested in the extra credit option, when I come and pass this around, you can let me know and I'll give you the extra credit paper. Go ahead and get started. It is a group assignment.